Yeah. Speaking of a uh, segue to, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, going down and needing some some quiet time. Uh, BMW and Mercedes sales are going down. <laughs> How's that? Terrible. Keep going. Yeah. Um, so some new uh, data coming to us here from Tesla Roddy. Uh, title I like Tesla Model Three wreaks havoc on uh, MB or Mercedes Benz, as the commoner may know them as, and uh, BMW in the luxury sedan segment. So looking at some sales figures here. Uh, you can just see a, a huge kind of downswing in the entire luxury segment. One of these things is not like the others. Yeah, and then you see the absolute hockey stick growth, as we would say, from the Tesla Model 3. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, Cybertruck shaped, actually, when you turn to the side. <laughs> That's right. So right. Where's the rotate button? No, I need one of those rotating monitors for that. Stupidest oh, thing. Oh, I saw that. Stupid. Please, people, stop shooting in vertical. Yeah. Stop doing that for anything. Oh. Anyways, so Model 3 crushing. Now, there is an interesting question here that I think um, I wonder your opinion on, and that is um, whether or not Tesla Model 3 should be considered a luxury vehicle. Hmm. I mean, it, it, it is. It is technically uh -huh. right now, right? That's Yeah, that's how yeah. people classify it. That's the, the industry. Yep. See, you know what? I've 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 had this thought because because it's not the most luxurious car, right? On the inside, it's pretty Spartan, um, but the the electronics system is clearly above and beyond like anything. Um, the drivetrain is is awesome, but that doesn't usually factor into a luxury brand so much, right? Keeping in mind, I'm not like an expert on cars necessarily or even the categorization of them or anything but um i don't know like i don't feel like i'm driving a luxury car right but i know that's how everybody sees it well it's luxury and so price kind of a weird yeah yeah in purchase price i don't know what do you think i think it depends what you define as luxury and an article i saw a while ago kind of highlighted that tech advanced tech and things like that is the new luxury mm. so the gaudy ornate versions of luxury cars that are traditional uh is not what the you know newer generation of luxury buyers want um certainly you know a mercedes interior is much more plush and Yes, much more comfortable uh, in, in those regards. In terms of like car, traditional car stuff, I would say, yeah, it doesn't really meet the standard of what a luxury vehicle would be. But I think the, the argument is that the paradigm of what is luxury is shifting towards modern con convenience. And so when you look at autopilot and voice commands, and a giant screen and watching, you know, Netflix while you're, yeah. you know, waiting outside a grocery store for your wife to grab whatever, it's things like that. Then these, you know, th those be like, like luxury is shifting away from, you know, uh, gold iPhones into, you know, just more advanced uh, tech. Mm -hmm. And so I think in that, in that regard, it, it is the most luxurious, if that's how you were to define it. Um, but I think there's some some kind of old stalwarts there that just don't want to let go of that ostrich skin leather seat or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Is ostrich skin also leather or is leather mean cow? It's <laughs> a question for the ages. Um, but, you know, so so I think it's different. Like, like if you get into, and I don't know if you've got, you know, been in a Ferrari ever or things like that. It, well, I guess, yeah, see, that that's another thing. People think of like high-end cars as like a Lamborghini and a Ferrari, these are not luxury cars. They're not comfortable. You know, <laughs> they suck, but they're fast as hell and they're super yeah. fun to drive. Uh, but like a Bentley was where I yeah. would probably put your typical, you know, uh, heated seat massaging kind of chair that reclines and you have a driver like a Maybach kind of a thing, you know, yeah, that stuff still yeah. exists and it always will. But it, it, you know, where do you draw the line? I guess is the question. 
So where, what, where is the, what do you call the category above that? Like say a Rolls Royce where like nobody buys a Rolls Royce to drive it. You have somebody drive you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's like, the thing where you're sitting in the backseat making calls to other heads of state and stuff. An know? ultra luxury kind of a deal. I guess. Yeah, because there, there is, and there's something known as accessible luxury. So if you look at um, the auto segment, you would see things like Infinity and Acura and Lexus. And these are the luxury brands of uh, Nissan, Honda, and Toyota. And so, yeah, they're, they're luxury in the sense that they're just like a step up from those very, uh, you know, economy type brands. Mm -hmm but they don't nearly touch what you would even like a Mercedes or a BMW and are in a completely different, you know, uh, uh, orbit than yeah, a Bentley or a Rolls Royce or something. So yeah. yeah, there's like different tiers of luxury. And I think that luxury itself is changing is the idea behind this. And so, yeah. So if you compare it there, it's crushing. Absolutely. But it's also kind of a mass market car. So of course yeah. it's going to crush. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I do think it's kind of unfair to compare it to other luxury brands because I don't really think of it in that sense yeah. necessarily. But, th but then I've had it for a year and I'm used to it and maybe I'm spoiled now. I don't know, you know? Yeah, yeah um, it's cherry picking the data, right? You can look at it and go, oh, look at the zero to 60 time in my Model 3 performance versus a Rolls-Royce Phantom something. <laughs> And you're like, yeah, but the point isn't to go zero to 60 right. in that car. Yeah. You know, as, uh, as, as good old John Travolta told us in, uh, what was that movie, Get Shorty? Uh, oh. He's like, if you're important, people will wait. <laughs> <laughs> it was like him and Danny DeVito talking about an electric car. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Now, I was having a conversation the other day with um, a buddy of mine. We were out having coffee and, and we were talking about, um, I don't remember how it came up, but you know, the, the rash of rash of uh, Tesla's getting um, messed with and yeah. keyed and, and kicked and stuff like that. And it's all getting caught on century cam. And we've talked about it here that, you know, I, I don't know necessarily that Tesla's are being targeted more than other cars or if they're just being caught because it's the right. only car that has a, a security system that can do that. Um, and he was kind of making the point. It was like, well, it's kind of like back in the day when like Mercedes would have that little emblem on the hood and people would break that off just to kind of give a middle finger to that rich guy, you know? Mm. And, and he was making the point that he still thought that Tesla's had that sort of flavor to them. Yeah. You know, that, like if you're looking around a parking lot and you see a Tesla, it's going to stand out. Somebody's going to be like, ah, Richie Rich over there, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's just like, you just want to, nah. Yeah, no, I'm, nah. I'm with it. Yeah. You see Tom Brady get knocked out of the first round of the playoffs. You're like, yeah, take that. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm sure he's a nice guy, you know, I'm sure he's probably a great, great person to hang out with. Yeah. Um, but you just want him to fail, right? You want him to take him down a peg. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's a lot of the 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 dissent, and and the people that are shorting Tesla stock, which are mm -hmm. you know collecting welfare now mostly. So it's one <laughs> of those things where, um, yeah, you want them to fail because they are they are you know they have that stature, that that thing. I mean, it's like Apple. You know, Apple's a lot of the same way. Like people hate Apple for for not good reasons just because they yeah. are you know they're apple and i'm i'm one of those people but well but that's what i'm saying like i've had this car for about a year and a half now and i'm used to it and i never really thought it was like luxurious or anything you know mm -hmm. um and i certainly don't now because i'm used to it so it's just kind of baffling to me that that people would uh see it in that light in the first place but then see it and and have that rage build in them to the point that it's like i have to you know i have to slash my along the side of this car just to put this guy in his place or whatever and it's kind of like I just, it's, it's just my car dude it's yeah yeah it's just the <laughs> car know? and yeah. i never bought it for any luxury purpose i bought it because it's it, it drives like a like an amazing car now i'm showing here on the photo <laughs> of our first tesla and stuff but i was going to say that this actually doesn't help when your delivery experience is like this and they give it to you with a giant bow on it like that now you drive it with a bow on it because then you're asking for it Ooh. now they don't give you the bow see that's the thing they don't tell you dude yeah i know What's i know point? fraud just keep fake, the car sad <laughs> yeah no this was our uh this was our, our our delivery day january 20 uh january 16th 2016 see even the baby's happy 
that 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 was the irony of the whole thing is that this photo is like the happiest my son has ever looked in a photo <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that, that was a good uh, a good time but um back then and it was it very much was like that i, I would say Sure. And I think, I think that's kind of going back to what I was talking about earlier. Like at what price point will people stop to see it that way? Cause I mean, the model S definitely was for several years, like, yeah, you know, yeah. It ha- I mean, it earned that, that stigma essentially. Yeah. Well, um, of course it was like a hundred thousand dollar car. Right. Right. And in fact, when I bought ours, that was the thing is I didn't even consider a Tesla when I was looking at electric cars because I'm, I, I had that in my brain of like, yeah. pfft, no, no way. Uh, but then I remember at our company, we had bought one or leased one for our like loaner car for people visiting, uh, which is how I started to actually get, you know, used to one. Um, and from there I was like, well, wait, if we can lease one just for when people come visit, like maybe it's not as crazy expensive as I thought. Mm -hmm. So it opened up my eyes. I think that's where a lot of these, uh, other companies coming out with really substandard electric cars, uh, like Mercedes, like, uh, you know, BMW, um, all these guys, Audi, you know, uh, that really are putting out these these products that don't live up to their own brand or even a 2012 Tesla Model S, for example. Yeah. Um, and and you look at it and you go, that's going to open those people's minds to electric cars. And then they're going to go shop for an electric car and they're quickly going to realize that Tesla is your best bet, basically. Mm. Um, unless there are cases where it's it's not, but in in general it's going to win you know nine times out of ten when you look at like price and features and utility and all those kind of things so i uh, it's it's a funny thing man yeah. um but yeah you know th- that's how we ended up buying it was because we found a used one for half price essentially right you know because there was no way i was going to spend that much money on it like i don't like cars in general i've never wanted to spend money on a car only when we got that did it actually the math kind of work out where i'm like oh this is this is actually like a good deal and then you're like, the Teslanomics here are amazing. Oh. <laughs> no, that, that was in motion for you. Yeah, that was, that was a, a thing that came up much later. <laughs> hey, thanks for checking us out, guys. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. We do a weekly show here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to Our Ludicrous Future, where we discuss all the things that are going to make our future totally ludicrous. You can join us here on YouTube or at any of your favorite podcast places. Plus, if you want to get some behind-the-scenes stuff and join a cool community, you can help support the channel at patreon.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.